Across several different polls, as well as aggregate polling, the Biden administration's approval rating continues to sink to new lows nearly every single day. And while there are some polls that show he's above water or maybe 50-50, most of the polls, and again, the aggregates show he's sinking. Why? I think regular Americans are starting to wake up to the problems. For one, liberals and progressives who demanded certain left-wing policy changes didn't get them. When Joe Biden got elected, all of a sudden, all those promises were just washed away. Priorities shifted. Although he did give them some of what they wanted, he, he reversed Donald Trump's ban on critical race praxis in government. We still see many people saying on Twitter like, yo, what about all of these things you said you'd do for us? He didn't do them. But that was fine for most people. They'd say, yeah, well, we expected him to lie. And I guess Joe Biden not giving us what we want. Well, it's better than Donald Trump. And then they started seeing something interesting. The reopening of child migrant detention facilities, the catastrophe in Afghanistan, the failing economy, the labor shortage, the price increases, and people started to wake up to, uh uh-oh, this is way worse than Donald Trump. Perhaps it was that your emotional responses to fake news and grifter manipulation from the mainstream press drove you to do something entirely stupid. And now you are learning that fire indeed hot. When you touch it, it burns. But you were told over, over and over again by the press that Joe Biden wasn't going to cause any of these problems. Well, of course, we've seen many Republicans say that we should be invoking the 25th Amendment or Kamala Harris should be or that the Biden administration. They, they should be all impeached. Of course, Republicans would say that. And of course, we are still seeing Democrat propagandists and left wing activists who refuse to accept the failures of the Biden administration across the board. Oh, they may concede Afghanistan is bad. Why? Because they've lost the support of the mainstream media. Even even Chris Cuomo is running segments of Americans trapped in Afghanistan. You see, the warmonger class, they have no choice. They have to push the lines that will drive America further into war and conflict. And that spells bad news for Democrats and Republicans moving forward. And this is good news for disaffected liberals, the politically homeless, anti-war activists, because it means that so long as the populist right can maintain or grow their position in the Republican Party, with people flocking away from Democrats, you may actually start to see a return to American priorities, the end of foreign war. And I got to admit, for many progressive leftists, these would be victories, though they would certainly lose on many of their leftist arguments. And I'm not talking about the authoritarian left. They're crying right now. Now, a lot of these leftist populists who maybe want universal health care, other policies, which, you know, do sort of flow into the area of authoritarian Their main concern is improving the lives of the working class, not government or state power, though they may inadvertently give that up. They should be happy to see war ending and Republican politicians win who oppose authoritarianism and would seek to end foreign interventions, protect our borders, protect the working class. However, I think tribalism runs deep and many of these people refuse to accept it. But at the very least, we are now seeing many staunch never Trumpers shocked and just saying, you know what? I regret my vote on Twitter. We saw many people saying that they regretted their vote for Joe Biden. Sam Harris, notoriously anti-Trump, has tweeted out that he is eating his words syllable by syllable because people are finally realizing Joe Biden had no plan. Joe Biden didn't campaign. He just kept calling a lid. But you hated Trump so much you were willing to crash the ship just for the sake of saying orange man bad, I guess. And it shows you the dangerous path we're on when people are willing to vote for someone, not because they believe in what he offers, but because they just hate. They hate. They hate. That's what the Democratic Party has to offer. That's why when they text my phone, these these people running, like the person who's running against Lauren Boebert in Colorado, she said, vote for, uh, help me win my campaign because Lauren Boebert is bad. And I said, that is not a campaign. I have no idea what you want to do or why I would donate to you. So I'm not going to going to. How about you text me something other than hate these people? Because I don't want to hate people. I don't want to hate you when you text me telling me to hate. But I'm sick of it. And maybe now other people are starting to wake up to it, which means the prospects for 2022, though an eternity away in political standards, it may be shifting very heavily for a lot of reasons outside of just gerrymandering. 
But let's take a look at some of this polling. And I'll, I'll first show you the Republican outrage, but we'll quickly just jump into the current state of Biden regret. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com, become a member, and you will get an ad-free experience on all of our amazing news articles, as well as access to exclusive members-only segments with many more shows currently in the works. We're working on another show called The Green Room, which is actually just when we have guests arriving, and there's some, you know, sillier conversations, things you might not know, interesting ideas that don't make it to the main show, because, well, the main show is very political, but maybe, you know, when we had Bannon here, we were talking about like transhumanism and globalism and technocracy, and these things don't make it into the main show, but they're interesting nonetheless. That will just be boom. If you're a member, you get that, and you get the members-only segment. Become a member, but don't forget, like this video, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, let me first show you the obvious. We have this from Ross Story. Lauren Boebert demands Kamala Harris be impeached for not invoking the 25th Amendment. Well, you know, with all due respect, I think this is fairly predictable. Lauren Boebert is a right wing populist, America first type candidate. And so, of course, she's going to be like, we should use every tool in our arsenal to impeach and remove the failing presidency. It's obvious, isn't it? We have Maria Bartiromo, ignorantly asking Kevin McCarthy to look at the 25th Amendment to remove Biden from a couple days ago. Raw story, of course, is the source and they are left leaning and they and, and they call her ignorant for saying it. I don't understand why that would be ignorant. I, that makes no sense. I understand the vice president needs to invoke it, but she can certainly look at it. Now, regardless, seeing Mar- uh, Maria Bartiromo entertain the 25th Amendment, entirely predictable. And then we have Madison Cawthorn calls on Harris to invoke 25th Amendment and remove Joe Biden as president over Afghanistan crisis. Biden's inability to lead is not a political talking point. It's a demonstrable fact, he said. Now, we can come back and take a look at these arguments, but I'm more interested in what do Biden's supporters or, you know, I guess not really his supporters, but what do do his voters have to say? You may have seen this. Sam Harris tweeted on January 20th, feeling overwhelming gratitude for the adults in the room. And then on August 26, Sam Harris, one of the biggest podcasters in the world with 1.5 million followers, said publicly eating these words syllable by syllable. We have this tweet, one woman to 11,200 retweets. I regret my vote for Biden. Here's another one. I thought I voted for Biden so this ish wouldn't happen. This is absolutely BS. In response to learning that the DHS was using expedited removal for families who cross without authorization on the southern border. And then we have on Twitter, regret voting for Biden actually was trending. I don't think it was trending as far and wide as people might want it to, but it was certainly (laughs) popping up because of the Afghanistan crisis. One person says, I can honestly say I regret voting for Biden. Anyone regret voting for Biden yet? After Afghanistan, more people regret voting for Biden. This is from NewJersey.com. This is people starting to wake up. NewJersey.com reporting, or I'm sorry, it's an opinion piece. They say, I did not always agree with the comments President Donald Trump made while in office, but I admired the way he handled world affairs and the economy. We are piling on such debt that I do not see how we will ever pay it back. We've lost our respect as a nation from world leaders after the Afghanistan failure. I do not believe we should blame President Joe Biden. We should blame the voters who elected him a lifelong politician who has previously opposed military actions against our enemies and someone who more Americans are realizing that the job of president is over his head. Thanks to his incompetence, 13 Americans died for nothing during the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Biden voters wanted more free stuff and public workers unions supported him to gain power and to continue ruining the country. Now you can see the mistake they made. Our schools teach more hate than math and science. We spend more on education than most other developed countries but rank in the middle of the pack for math and science. This is because of irresponsible teachers backed by their unions. The public unions deserve a lot of blame for our high cost of living since they support politicians who give away the the store to those unions. Now, I don't completely agree with all of the sentiment there in that op-ed. The point is, a lot of people are regretting their vote. One person says, Joe Biden, I regret voting for someone who would allow so many people to become destitute on September 6. You see, it's the left it, it, is, it is not just the liberals, it is the leftists. There's no winning when you build a coalition of people who hate each other. Leftists don't like liberals, liberals don't like leftists. There's no winning. Here's, there's, just, there's, there's tons of it, okay? I don't need to show you every single person who said they regret. There are some people who say they didn't regret it. 
One person says, I regret voting for Biden so much, dude, less than a year in office. And I look around at the turmoil he's created. Some people say they don't regret it because the alternative was Donald Trump. OK, that's fine. But people are finally starting to wake up. You see, it didn't just start now with Afghanistan. From the socialistalternative.org, Biden betrays progressive promises. How do we win real change? July 1st, people were recognizing what Joe Biden was saying, what he meant, and he did not and never meant to help progressives. All of these young people who were exploited by the Democratic Party, this is what they do. And I hope you now wake up and realize how it works. There's an old saying that if you're not liberal when you're young, you have no heart. And if you're not conservative when you're old, you have no head. And I think it's actually a dumb saying. The reality is Democrats exploit the fact that young people don't have experience with what they do to people in the previous administrations. So for me, when I stupidly voted for Obama in 2008, I thought, hey, this sounds good to me. And then I was like, oh, look, I voted for the exact same thing. And then come 2016, I said, yo, I'm out. And then come 2020, I'm like, yeah, OK, these people are nuts. I'm going to vote for Trump. And there were a lot of young people I talked to who said, but Trump's really bad. You got to vote for the Democrats. And I'm like, yo, Joe Biden was VP in the Obama administration. Eight years. We saw what happened. And they're like, I don't remember any of that. I was a child. And there it is. That's why they want the voting age to be lower. Let's talk about Biden's failure and why people are regretting it. Or I should say a reflection of that regret appears in polls. The real clear politics aggregate. Now, of course, I use civics. I've used other polls and talked about Joe Biden's failing falling approval rating. But to be fair, I've often said of Trump, I don't think any single poll is fair to use, though in some of my segments I have used individual polls. I think it's fair to criticize me absolutely in that regard. But I do think aggregate polling is much better. Because there's a bunch of different biases that appear in different polling. And when you put them all together, you get a better picture. Much bigger sample size, right, of all these different polls. Well, the Real Clear Politics approval rating shows that Joe Biden enjoyed massive approval, 55% back on January 27th, which to me makes no sense. For any president to come into an approval rating after not doing anything makes no sense. But look at this. Over time, it just falls. It pops up a little bit, then falls a little bit more pops up a little bit, falls even more, and has now dropped dramatically to the worst it's ever been in aggregate. An approval rating of 45.8 with a disapproval of 49.2. That's bad. And some are predicting, based on what we've seen in the press, that this could be the end for the Biden administration. He's not going to be able to pull himself out of this rut. I don't think he can. You know, I thought when Biden got elected that he was bad, but at least you'd have adults in the room, right? It's kind of what Sam Harris said. I didn't like Joe Biden. I wasn't stupid enough to vote for him. But people like Sam Harris fell for it. And he's supposed to be a smart guy. Why'd you fall for it? Now you're eating your words. Look, to the people who voted for him and regret it, I don't say, ha ha, you know, Nelson from The Simpsons. Ha. No, I say, welcome to the fight. Thank you for finally starting to understand. Now let's try and clean up this mess. I don't know what the answer is. Maybe in 2022, we need Republicans to come in and just vote to impeach and remove him and Kamala. But then what? Speaker Pelosi president? I don't think that's a solution either. I think our government is fundamentally damaged, mind you, because we have too many people who don't care and are extracting from the system. Now, of course, I want to point out in these polls, you can see Rasmussen has Biden extremely underwater with 42 approval and 46 disapproval, a spread of 14. But don't but you, you may look at that and say, oh, Rasmussen is so biased. Hold on. USA Today, Suffolk has 41 approval to 55 disapproval. That from a couple weeks ago, from about a week or two ago, minus 14 in the spread. And you have Reuters, which is plus three. You've got Economist plus one. Politico is minus two. I'm sorry. I think it is fair to say that when you put all the polls together, Any honest person would recognize the failure of the Biden administration. It's been getting worse. It has been getting recognizable to the point where even 538, bless their hearts, have no choice but to say, "Okay, people don't like Joe Biden. Look at this. 538 of all outlets. 47.2 percent disapproval. 46.7 percent approval. That to me is truly amazing. And I, I want to make sure we go over to civics. I think civics is a fantastic source because they can break things down by demographics. And they have 94,961 responses, which is absolutely massive. And you can see that right now, 50% of people 
disapprove of Biden. 42% approve. What I love about civics and why I like using it is that you can you can then look at Democrats and see it's almost like Joe Biden can do no wrong. Since Joe Biden started, uh, was, was inaugurated, he's only lost 5% of Democrats. And a good portion just are undecided now. 85% still approve. Republicans, actually, this one surprised me. He started with 90% disapproval and now sits at 94% disapproval. I didn't realize Republicans would be willing to give him a chance, but they did. And he, he, he lost that one. But ind- independent voters are where, it's, where it matters. 58% disapproval, 38, um, I'm sorry, 30% approval. Those are the people who need convincing to vote one way or the other. That to me is fascinating that we're seeing all of this. And I'll tell you what I find really, really funny in the fact that it's obvious Joe Biden is failing is that Newsweek ran a fact check. Has Joe Biden's approval rating gone underwater amid Afghanistan criticism? It needs to be fact check, fact checked because the Democrat zealot tribalists will tell you it's fake news. His approval rating isn't going down or if, if it's going down, it's not because of this. No, it's not true. So Newsweek says, OK, we got to fact check this one. Why? They run fact checks on things that find themselves in culture war conflict when the left and the right are in disagreement about something. Newsweek had to run a fact check on very obvious polling, concluding it is true. Biden's approval rating has dipped, coinciding with criticism he has faced over the U.S. military withdrawal from Afghanistan. During this dip, his approval rating fell below his 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 approval rating fell below his disapproval rating. This has given him a net negative rating, which can be described as being underwater. Over at Civics, you can take a look at the net approval negative nine. Negative nine net approval for Joe Biden. He's faltered, and it was obvious. And I'm shocked that people were even willing to give him this chance. To be completely honest, I was I was surprised people thought that Joe Biden would be capable of this. You think this guy could do this job, man. Now you go back and it starts to it starts to appear like maybe. Maybe those people calling for the 25th Amendment or impeachment are correct. The Hill says Biden approval rating drops to record low 48 percent in morning consult poll. Now, 48 is higher than some of the other polls we have. But again, even in polling that generally favors the president, record lows. Now, here's the best assessment. And then we'll talk about removing the man from the Hill. Biden's falling poll numbers, both better and worse than you think. Really? Better? In what capacity? All right. Well, they're going to mention something about the British Army being, you know, um, evacuated. But let's let's take a look at this. Bad news for the 2022 midterms. Here's why it's worse than you realize. Biden's approval has fallen, but there is not much consensus on how far. Recent polls have his approval rating approval rating ranging from 41 to 50 percent. Where Americans do agree is that the Biden administration has badly botched its Afghanistan policy. In a CBS News survey, 74 percent believe the withdrawal has gone badly including 62% of Democrats. This collapse is in support spells trouble for the Democrats in the midterm elections, already likely to lose seats. Their House majority is looking ever more ephemeral. As the midterm elections are generally a referendum on the president, any slide in his approval and public confidence is a severe problem. The recent experience of Presidents Clinton and Obama is particularly ominous for Democrats. Both Clinton and Obama saw initial strong approval ratings after 100 days. Clinton at 55, Obama at 65, yet both saw their approvals fall to the low 40 percent range by midterm election day. Similarly, Biden had higher ratings after 100 days, 57 approval. But now his numbers are sinking down over 10 points from his high water mark. Both Clinton and Obama saw their House majorities collapse, losing 54 and 63 seats respectively. Beyond the numbers, Biden is simply not handling the first true crisis of his administration well at all. First true crisis? I thought the labor shortage, the rising prices would, and the border crisis, children sleeping in dirt, that would land somewhere on the crisis chart, wouldn't it? Sure. Beyond the numbers, they say, they say, he had a fairly quiet first seven months and his high approval ratings seem to be tied not just to the typical honeymoon of any new presidency, but to the relief that the tumult of the Trump administration had passed. But not now. Not only has Team Biden looked lost and befuddled, the patina of competence has worn off. If Biden continues his current trajectory, Democrats could be staring into a nasty abyss in 2022. And tell me this. Why should I, an independent, disaffected liberal, vote Republican in 2022? 
I voted Republican in 2020. I begrudgingly voted down ballot Republican because I didn't want the Democrats to have power because they're nuts. Is that the only thing you have to offer me? Is that I don't like Democrats? Sorry, not good enough. It was when Trump released his second term agenda, I said, you know what? I can get behind this and I'll vote down ballot because I can. And I want to see Trump's agenda, a school choice, for instance, banning critical race applied principles, identitarianism. Those things violate the law. They should be called out. Ending the war in Afghanistan. All of these things I like. Even when Biden botches it, I still like the fact that we're getting out of Afghanistan. I can recognize that as bad as it is. Why should I vote for Republican in 2022? What are they going to offer? Are they simply going to say, look how bad Biden is? You know, that doesn't sit well with me. I do not want to entertain exactly what caused this problem in the first place, that Biden was voted in simply because people hated Trump so much. Now, granted, hatred of Trump is different from actually giving him a a, a, a good faith approval or disapproval. I think Donald Trump did a fair job. I think he did some things wrong. He said some things that were dumb, a lot of things that were dumb. But all in all, the economy was doing really, really well. He was drawing down our forces in the Middle East. I liked a lot of it. He was strengthening our borders, bringing jobs back to the country. Those are good things. Banning critical race uh, praxis in government trainings and and with contractors. I liked those things. So I think he did fairly decently on COVID. I think he made a lot of mistakes, but it's hard to know for sure. This was a tough issue to deal with. And I think you know, Trump should never have entertained any lockdowns or what was happening. But, you know, here we are. Biden deserves credit for following through with the withdrawal. I'm going to say it even if it was bad. Now, he screwed it up royally and deserves criticism in that regard. But we, but we want, we want to be fair. You know, I, I like the I like the drawdown. Trump started it. Biden completed it. I say in that area alone, good for them. It's just a it's just a shame that they voted for somebody not because he was going to do something they wanted, but because he wasn't Trump. So do you expect me to do that in 2022? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not entertaining that idea. But we'll see what the Republicans actually have to offer. A lot of populist Republicans are, are, are now, you know, stepping up. Uh, they've got some better ideas. They're pushing a lot of those things that Trump was pushing, and that's a good reason to vote for them. Let's throw it back to the demands for the removal of Joe Biden, though. Perhaps, my friends, the removal of Joe Biden would be a good thing, or a bad thing. Let's think about it. Right now, we have chaos. We have a failing administration, labor shortage, economic crisis, inflation, crisis at our southern border, a million, what, a million Afghan refugees now desperate to flee the country. The Afghan economy is in collapse. Photos emerging of people lining up outside banks, can't get any money. Taliban has no way to operate the infrastructure of this country, nor, nor do they know how. They're not going to be able to keep the lights on. Do we say enough is enough? It must stop now. Get him out. Okay. Then do we get President Kamala Harris? And is she going to do the same stupid things? Push the same stupid agenda? Is it going to be Nancy Pelosi? Or maybe the Republicans have no choice but to wait. Why? Well, there's the political aspect. Is, does it make sense to impeach Joe Biden or Joe Biden and Kamala and then just make Speaker Pelosi president when her policies are going to be as bad as Kamala's or Biden's? Or are they stuck? Because impeachment won't actually do anything to change the administration. And also in the political realm is showing people that you get what you vote for in this capacity, something that is going to greatly benefit Republicans in the House, granting them subpoena power and impeachment power. Because let's be real. Even if Republicans wanted to make this move right now, could they do it? No. Although some Democrats could potentially step in and say, yeah, so here's the issue. Republicans are in the minority by only a small number. I think it's like 11. Let's say 15 to 20 Democrats, progressive ones, step up and say, we want Biden out. Every single Republican might say, okay. And then you have a 50-50 Senate. Maybe you get Manchin saying, yep. Get rid of Biden. That just means you get Kamala. And that's probably why the Democrats would go along with it, because they'd be like, we retain the presidency for now and create an opportunity to, to pull out of this, this, this spiral, this, this entropic collapse that we're in. Which brings me back to that, that article about the, the good. So, so the article is, it's both, both better and worse. What's better about Biden's failing approval ratings? They say this. Biden can recover for 2024. 
They say most Americans don't blame him for the Afghanistan war in general, and they approve of him getting out. Americans still don't put foreign policy at the top of their concerns. In the most recent YouGov benchmark, respondents put health care, the economy, and the environment at the top. National security comes in fourth on the list, with just 9% ranking it as a top issue. And that is boosted by Republicans who place it on top for now at 16%. Biden can recover. Absolutely. I mean, three years is an eternity, is beyond an eternity. It is oblivion when it comes to politics. You, I mean, we're talking like a month can change an election outright. So maybe if the Republicans act too soon and get rid of Biden, Kamala Harris will instantly see a boost in the polls. Democrats and independents will be like, OK, Biden's gone. That's a relief. And maybe what makes more sense is to say you voted for this. You get it. We'll do our best to mitigate the damage. But come 2022, we will wait for a referendum on the president and not make a hasty action right now. So to the Republicans who are saying, you know, you got to get them out. It may just be empty platitudes because are the Democrats really going to go along with it. Raw story reports and mind you, a left by a source. Boebert said the blame starts at the top, she said during a Freedom Caucus press conference with Biden and his handpicked vice president who bragged that she was right there making the same bad decisions. And if not for her own dereliction of duty, she should be impeached for not demanding we invoke the 25th Amendment. Impeach Biden, impeach Kamala Harris and throw in the secretary of state, she said. I came here to make sure my boys never lived in a socialist nation. And right now, today, I have to second guess who would actually lead them if they took a stand to serve and join our military. Woke doesn't work. Cutting and running doesn't work. Being asleep or senile or sucking on applesauce obviously doesn't work. And she's not the only one. We have Madison Cawthorn. Fox News reports that the freshman rep for the Republican Party, Madison Cawthorn, is calling on Vice President Kamala Harris to invoke the 25th Amendment and remove President Biden from office following the deadly botched withdrawal of the U.S. of U.S. troops in Afghanistan. Our nation is at a crisis point. He wrote a letter. He warned of China's ambitions on the world stage, the resurgent Russia, rising inflation, chaos at the southern border, and other global predicaments threatening the U.S., and argued that confronting them will take strong, decisive leadership. And do you think that will be Kamala Harris? Joe Biden's physical inability to lead is not a political talking point. It's a demonstrable fact, Cawthorn told Fox News on Thursday evening. He is not mentally fit to serve as president of the United States. It's tough, really. I see the true political value in retaining the House and getting subpoena power and then investigating and then impeaching, because right now it maybe is just a pipe dream to claim you even could. Maybe Republicans should just try because we can't go another minute of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris might actually be better. I know it's crazy to say, right? People are thinking there that it's a positive statement. I'm not saying Kamala Harris is good at her job. I'm saying if, on a, if, if you've got negative 100 to positive 100 with Trump sitting at like a positive 50, you know, he's like a lot of what he's doing is good, but man, it's far from perfect. And then the negatives, it's getting really, really bad. Yeah, the Biden administration is like negative 100 at this point. And OK, that's unfair. Like a negative 83. How about that? And Kamala Harris would be like negative 10. But negative 10 is better than negative 83. You get, my, you get my point. She may still be really, really bad. But isn't it just slightly better than Biden? And therein lies, I think, the ultimate problem with how this election went down. And, you know, what, what we're dealing with now is that Kamala Harris didn't get a single delegate. She was unpopular. Nobody liked her. They could have put up a ham sandwich and people would have voted for it because people were locked down in their houses. There was no sports. They had no they had nothing to do. Movies weren't happening. I guess streaming movies were their sports were taken away. And so they just said, what do we have? And so then people were just plugged in, inundated with politics all day, every day. And then you had universal mail in voting rule changes. And people were just told, vote for anything so long as it's not Donald Trump. Stay alive, Joe Biden. All we need is your corporeal form. And this is what you voted for. Some of this makes me hopeful, you know, because I feel like there's a lot of people waking up. The people who are tweeting, I regret my vote. I'm like, those people are going to be more discerning in the future now realizing they've been had. The polls are changing, changing. Independents are waking up, but it's Democrats who aren't. But there's one thing you don't see in the civics poll that I think is very important. Among Democrats, Joe Biden has a 78 percent net approval, which is actually quite incredible. What they don't tell you, how many people left the Democratic Party? Aha. Uh-huh. 
Interesting, isn't it? When you see 85% approval for Biden, let's say, let's do simple math. A hundred people say, yay, we love Biden. And then 15 of them say, you know what? We're not approving of Biden anymore. You then say, okay, his approval rating has gone down. But what would happen if you actually saw another small percentage of people say, you know what? I'm leaving the Democratic Party outright over this. The percentage would stay relatively the same depending on how many people left and stayed. It may still be 85% approval with the party shrinking. And therein lies the important picture. The people willing to say they're Democrats will always back Biden. But maybe what's really happening is the reason independents are souring on Biden is because not just independent voters waking up, but Democrat voters going independent, realizing the Democratic Party has nothing to offer you. Perhaps that is, in the end, what may be happening and may be happening in both parties to a certain degree. We'll see how things play out come 2022. We're about a year away. So campaigning and politicking is, a, politicking is about to start swinging. Man, I can't believe it's September already. Isn't that crazy? So Labor Day is coming up. I hope you enjoy that weekend and have a good time. And then we're going to be entering 2022 soon. And uh, then we're going to see Knives Out, baby. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out. That'll be at 8 p.m. And I'll see you all then.